you know, as a company, we've basically been a big band of nerds building attractions for brands for years. Stuff for Intel to take to Comic-Con, stuff for Warner Brothers to take to CES, uh, you know, but one of the challenges we always ran into is you're at Comic-Con for five days and then Comic-Con is over. And where does that stuff go? Usually in the trash. And so we felt like there was an opportunity for a new place that that stuff could live all year round. Uh, and not only that, with all this great new tech from virtual reality, augmented reality, different kinds of sensors, that we could put that, that we could be an exhibition for that stuff uh, and, and, and create new kinds of experiences. And we felt like, you know, we love social, right? Getting people back together in real life. Um, you know, the, a little bit of backlash against social media, like, hey, what about being together again in person? And so part of the way we've designed this is not only to be able to, you know, reconnect with old friends, but make new friends. A lot of stuff that encourages, you know, two, three, four, even a hundred people to play together. Um, so behind me is our Carnival Midway. We took a lot of classic Carnival mechanics from swinging to throwing and tossing uh, in order to create a, a, a bunch of different uh, experiences. So <laughs> behind me are these, uh, my co-founder and I are both trained clowns. These are the big circus balls uh, in the circus that a clown will walk on. We mounted those on casters so that uh, we could you know, play this four player game. But these things all come apart. So you could imagine six of these all mounted around a floor projection for a different kind of game. One of them mounted in front of a projector for a different kind of game. This thing is really a movie theater for interactive so that the content can shift and evolve. That you'll see later, our interactive theater is 100 touchscreens facing a big stage. We can run everything from game shows to talent competitions to a new kind of karaoke. Uh, so that, the, again, the content can change, not just week to week or day to day, but even by user. Um, and so this is, you know, there's more content than you can do in a couple of hours. Uh, and so the idea is being able to ensure that you can have a different experience when you come back. Um, is that working? Oh yeah, maybe. I think we got to put a new battery in it. Oh darn it! We'll, we'll do this again. Guys, okay. We'll anyway, Come back so and do it. Somebody take the flag off. Then how? Uh, well, we won't be able to have a mic at all, so we'll just do uh, okay. a separate interview. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, got always, uh, yeah, it's not mic. You know what I didn't realize? This is happening. I apologize. That's okay. I think what we can do is what we'll we'll, um, we'll get most of some of the stuff that you're saying kind of off camera as you're describing some of this. Got it, okay. And then um, I'll do just a separate quickie interview with great. you um, afterwards. Great, Okay. But he's just gonna That's switch good. out on battery. Okay, no problem. Do you uh, think I can maybe do a phone interview another time? I just feel like sure. the audio of this is it's gonna be really a nightmare. It's really tough. Yeah, yeah we can do that, but what so I wanna do is I want you guys to experience it. Definitely, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then at the end, talk with me okay. and I'll schedule uh, anything that you guys need. Okay, sorry, yeah. 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 I'm the scheduler. <laughs> You know, and it's, so these, it's one of these backup beeping, you know, wow, what a giggle. Yeah. Well, great for that. This is working? Okay, good. Um, awesome, folks. All right, so let's keep going around here. Oh, yeah, thanks, Will. Um, and, uh, and so this Carnival Midway, you know, again, real big fo focus on social, getting people back together again. Um, uh, but we took some classic Carnival mechanics and then kind of augmented them with, with, with cheap sensors and different kinds of, of uh, uh, displays. So this one over here is a train race. You take the classic, you know, sort of pumping on a train and, and it's two players against two players trying to race their, uh, their train across the, across the chasm. And then, beautiful, thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, wonderful, thank you, sir. Okay, and then as we come around here, this is one of my favorites. Remember the old uh, 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 circus, you throw the dart at the, at the balloon? Yeah. We merged that with Candy Crush. Oh. So there's a camera facing this wall and it's gonna be able to identify both the color and the position of these. So we're gonna throw a ball at this and I might throw a green at a yellow balloon, it turns green. I throw a red at a blue balloon, it turns red. So I'm gonna need your guys' help. All right, let's go. Throw this. Good, all right, that's turning red. Okay, great, yeah. Let's bike as many as possible. Blue, red, yeah, perfect. <laughs> well, what's, the, what's the dog? The dog will destroy all the blue and it'll stop that little, that little air ball. Yeah. <laughs> So we got physical effects, <laughs> all variety of different stuff. Matches. What do the matches do? Uh, the, the, yeah, that'll throw. Uh, I forget what that one does. Uh, so you get the idea. <laughs> uh, okay, I need two of you over here. 
Uh, this is uh, the Wrecking Ball. You are literally part of our new destruction crew. Uh, you're going to grab those, you're going to take these Wrecking Balls, and you're going to destroy that building. So uh, avoid the humans and try to hit the explosives. So it's going to start to slide down here pretty shortly. Swing that into start. Beautiful. Okay, and you're hired. All right. <laughs> all right. So as it comes down, all right. There it goes. Beautiful. Swinging. Perfect. Destroy as much of the building as possible. Both sides. You can swing on all the sides. Avoid the humans. Perfect. You're doing great. <laughs> nice. Yes, hit the... <laughs> you got this, Ruben! <laughs> oh my god! That's amazing. <laughs> uh, wait, you're going, you've got one more drop, one more crack. Oh, fast. Here we are, so close to the top. Oh, and the winner is... <laughs> oh, narrow margin, Kevin. <laughs> Um, and so, okay, you're going to see here that there's a there's stuff that we've made from whole cloth, right? A lot of the games you've been playing. We also bought some stuff like Ski Ball, because Ski Ball is awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, you'll see later in, in the VR, we've also worked together with creators in order to take existing games and publish them on our platform. Think of this place like a huge iPhone, right? A 50,000 square foot iPhone. And so we've built all different platforms for touchscreen games, console games, virtual reality games, even board games to be able to publish on this platform. And the, it's free to get in, but you have this little stored value card we call a playing card, because we're a bunch of nerds. Uh, and and you, you store this up and then you're paying as you go. Now what that does is it allows us to share the revenue with content creators. So different game makers that make different things, we can then uh, uh, give them a, a cut of the revenue and a big ad for their game. You know, most games are like a hundred hours of play, right, in the home. In public, we need like five or ten minutes. And so they can adapt that version, make it, you know, publish it on here and, uh, you know, and, and, and be able to not only get a new revenue stream, but a big ad. It's all over the map. Okay. So, you know, you can play arcade games for a dollar or less, and you can go to a one hour game show for 10 or $15. I'm going to hide so you. I'm oh, a yeah, VR a lot. developer, and I have like a cool VR game. I could maybe bring it in and it, pitch it. Exactly and right. And like it, and it looks like the, you know, a, a nice fit. Then, yep, uh, then it would go. And in fact, we've done that already with a number of different VR titles. Okay, cool. Yeah, exactly and right. It's called Ventana and Holligate. Yep, we got Ventana, we got Holligate, and we even worked with Rebellion to adapt a PlayStation VR game, Battlezone, to, uh, 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 for public. Okay. They, we, you know, and so they modified it so that it used motion platform, it used the joystick controllers, shorter version, so it's not you know, 10 hours uh, in order to make it a good fit for here. Yeah. Uh, this is a photo booth. Uh, we definitely need a couple of you in there. Here, Kevin, why don't you give me your phone? Um, and and what will happen is it's going to put your face on that television when you sit in those theater seats. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Tina, beautiful. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, yeah! That is awesome! Thank you. Certainly. Um, okay. So, oh, sorry. Um, okay, keep coming this way. How many of you have done an escape room? Yes, 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 awesome. Okay, so we, you know, in 2013, there were zero escape rooms. There's over a hundred in LA now. Now we started experimenting with that kind of play in 2012. We just wanted a live action adventure where you're the character and you're having to get through a series. We made a whole spy adventure and nobody knew what we were talking about. They were like, what is it? Is it an iPhone app? And we were like, no, it's a real place where you go. And, and we think of escape rooms as a subset of a bigger category we call story rooms. Because what happens if the story is not about escaping the room and you want to flow Float down a haunted bayou, or pilot a spaceship through the galaxy, or be a minotaur in the middle of a maze. Uh, and so behind each of these doors, we have different worlds. So let's go see it, one of them. So in here, this is our haunted bayou. You're going to float down this haunted bayou. This was done in collaboration with Red Interactive and Starbreeze. 
And so they're being outfitted in these headsets. Thanks, Liz. You're being outfitted in these headsets, and you're going to now float down the river. So you start on this dock, you float down the river, and uh, you'll, you know, you, there's, there's going to be a physical railing there. There's going to be some boxes. You're defending your raft. Oh, yeah, you can see what they're seeing right there. <laughs> that's yeah there's the raft oh, that's where we see <laughs> yeah. and so they're gonna float on down that river and what they're doing is they're defending their raft from all the crazy attackers on the shore and then at one point the raft catches on fire you reach down you pick up a real uh, fire extinguisher in order to put it out so a whole mixed reality experience yeah so it maps the real world so you can see right there they are on the raft and we're, we're about to add in the the, the railings um, and the rest of it so up to four players, uh, all working together. And can they see each other? They can see each oh, other. I love it. Exactly right. And so the fire they got to put out, right? There's the fire. <laughs> Floating down the river. And sadly, there is AC in here. It's just not on yet. Woo! All right. Why don't we keep going here, guys? That's cool. Is that fun? Yeah. I can't believe it. So what's the other? Are there... Oh yeah, I'm gonna take you in. Yeah. Uh, you've seen this next one. Uh, okay, so that's our haunted bayou. Let's hop into uh, outer space. Outer space. All right. We're going to board. We're boarding Space Squad Infallible. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You you are on the bridge. <laughs> you are on the bridge of the Space Squad Infallible. And you are all going to work together, captain, pilot, navigator, all to be able to pilot through the galaxy. Now, a couple of important notes about this. This is multi-role. It is a different experience as the captain than it is as the pilot than it is as the navigator. You can come back and do the same experience. Much like a video game, as a team, you get a score. You either you can either succeed or fail. Your ship can blow up. I have, it's actually, I have never been able to do this with less than four people. Three people, we die every single time. Uh, but this will take as many as six, uh, all of these different roles, but then it's also episodic. So we're just working on episode two. Uh, you can imagine a VR headset in the corner. We've been looking around the galaxy for ages we finally find the secret planet Ruben is gonna go in the into VR onto the surface of the planet the rest of us are keeping the ship in orbit Ruben what do you see how many rocks are there what color are the moons and he's like oh my god there's three moons and, and Tina sitting here at the nav console being like three moons this is enemy territory what are we doing right and so it's a very interactive uh, 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 multiplayer um, so we want to really create something that is repeatable and uh, uh, you know changes each time you come back beautiful okay now this is Space Squad yeah. in space. <laughs> now, there is um, a legend in uh, ancient Los Angeles, back when they were mining in Los Angeles, uh, there was legend of a secret temple. And we discovered that mine shaft. <laughs> So this room is great for pictures. The next room is the only one that you can't take pictures in. Um, so in this room, we're all going to work together to find the dynamite and figure out how to go deeper into the mine shaft. So we're all going to work together, figure out how to uh, navigate the explosives. And once we do, we blow open this shaft. Also an all VR experience, but it's really a mixed reality experience. You put on a headset and then you're navigating through this maze and the walls of the maze match to what you're seeing in VR. There's two different experiences. One is more kids uh, focused experience, a little bit like Despicable Me made by Ubisoft called Rabbids. The other is a dark uh, uh, minotaur maze. You're traveling through a crazy maze in order to be able to figure out um, uh, 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 what's going on. Getting in elevators and all sorts of different things. It's actually as fun to do it as it is to watch people going through it as they sort of navigate around inside this maze. So the maze is the same, but depending on what VR experience, it changes the... It changes beginning. what you're... Exactly right. And then not only that, because you can go up and down levels, it sort of confuses you what part you... It feels like 
10 times the size right. than it is right. just this. So you really get to d navigate through lots of different areas. There's haptics in the floors, vibrating as you get on the, the elevator. Um, so all sorts of fun surprises. Now, so I've shown you a series of different attractions. We also have what we call the meta game. And hidden inside of this park are lots of little Easter eggs. There are secret rooms, there's secret closets, there's secret passageways. And that stuff is navigatable through lots of different, just sort of pulling back the curtain. Uh, one little place to get access to that stuff is right here. And you can see you have access to both short adventures and long adventures. And these will uh, give you little challenges that give you a little bit of piece of backstory, a little bit of navigating ability. <laughs> uh, and so, so lots of different stuff to get you a little bit of backstory, a little bit of access. Uh, any of you done immersive theater before? Yeah. So we draw on a little bit of immersive theater in order to be able to give you additional backstory. But then also we think of this place as a exhibition space for other kinds of theater. So, so imagine existing immersive theater creators can remount their productions here with us. We will launch with one production. Uh, so Lisa, you buy a ticket for that immersive theater production and you are in the middle of a theater experience. The rest of us are here for Tina's birthday. Now, those things are running at the same time. And so for you, we're basically making your theater experience more interesting as basically extras in your show. For, for us, you're making our experience more interesting because we're like, what the hell's happening to Tina, right? Like, that's freaking weird. There's something, you know, she's being dragged all around by, you know, some Victorian person in a clown outfit, uh, you know, whatever. So we, so we really built it to be able to showcase lots of different stuff. And, and part of that for us is we believe that the boundary between consumer and creator is getting really fuzzy. And so that we've actually built this to be able to showcase lots of different experiences. We have a whole secret inventor lab in the back with the ability to run, you know, laser cutters, router tables, and now we can have classes where people can come and build their own arcade games. Oh, wow. Experienced developers can come and figure out how to adapt to their existing game to public. Uh, and then we have a beta night. So off nights, Monday and Tuesday, d developers get to see, test their stuff with a live audience. The things that work graduate to prime time. And so we basically get to you know, crowdsource the curation of, of the content that ends up in the park. When does that start? So we'll start running classes in October. Okay. Yeah.